enjoy things that translate outside the realm of the weights. All those things make building your body worth it. Build consistency, build respect, build your body, build your life. Bodybuilding.com. Being fit feels amazing. You feel like you can overcome anything in life because you already have. You feel confident in yourself. You have nothing to worry about. You're healthy. You're taken care of. Now you can take on the world and go do what you need to do. When I was younger, my dad and I used to always work out together. He was an advocate on playing sports and being active and being healthy. He passed unexpectedly, and that was a driving force for me to continue to push myself in fitness. I helped inspire my mom to get into the fitness industry. My sister works out, my brother works out, and I know that there is that underlying, hey, dad's really proud of us, and this is what he wanted, and this is what he kind of bestowed on us. He wanted us to eat healthy, he wanted us to be healthy. I see everyone's life change when they have fitness become such a big part of their life with their self-esteem, with their confidence. What's up, guys? Trainer Mike here, bodybuilding.com, corporate headquarters, and we are hitting some back today. Back and a little bit of biceps for you at the end, too. So bonus for the biceps at the end of the back day. So this is a great workout, guys. If you're looking for something just to, to help blow up your back from all angles, we're talking middle of the back, upper back, lats, build width, build thickness, all that stuff you want, check this workout out. So um, we got some great stuff here. We're starting off with some compound exercises. First and foremost, we're gonna have a barbell row. So we're doing a bent over barbell row here. And then uh, we're gonna move on, play around with some supersets, some higher reps and things. So we're actually going five sets of eight here to kick this thing off. Barbell row is great for just overall um, thickness for your back. It's, it's a good compound movement. Now, the funny thing about the barbell row, so I legitimately used to put three plates on each side of a barbell row to do this. And I would just hump the thing up for four or five reps not the way you want to do a barbell row. So when you have this much freedom in your range of motion like you do with a barbell row, super important that you try and keep it controlled and keep it focused. So weight on here, we got a 45 and a 25 on each side. We're gonna try and get eight quality reps out for those five sets. Here we go, guys, let's kick it off. We're gonna go overhand for this. Felt good for a first set, but a little light. So we are gonna go up for our other sets here. Let me know what you guys are training today. Comment below, and if you guys have any questions, we wanna answer those for you too. But let's put some more weight on this bar. Always trying to find that fine balance between we wanna push ourselves, it's okay to have a little momentum, but we wanna make sure that we're getting the best contraction possible with each rep. Really important when you guys are looking at doing rows, you do a combination of chest supported rows and non chest supported rows. So this obviously being a non chest supported row here. So overhand grip and underhand grip, you're gonna notice a big difference in your elbow position. So when we come underhand, we're bringing our elbows really close into our body, typically a little better for like lats. So if I wanna target my lower lats, I'm gonna probably use more of an underhand grip. Uh, this is a little better. Overhand grip's a little better for mid upper back. All right, set two. <sighs> Woo! 
feeling that too. This is the kind of exercise it's gonna get your heart rate up a little bit. Um, as much as this is a back exercise, we're using a lot of legs in here as well, stabilizing with our core. Yeah, so speed with an exercise like this, it's gonna be really hard to control your tempo a lot. You're not gonna to wanna to go like super slow and controlled here. As the workout goes on, we'll play around with our tempo a little more. We're trying to go pretty strong on the eccentric or pull and then pretty controlled on the negative or uh, eccentric, excuse me. I do like deadlifts on back day. Um, today, they just didn't make it in there. It gets pretty, I mean, the tough thing about deadlifts is they're very time consuming. It takes a lot of time to warm up, a lot of time in between sets. So if I wanna do a really good back workout and throw some biceps in at the end, it's kind of hard to make deadlifts a part of that routine. No, weight training as a preteen is not a bad idea. Um, there used to be some myths out there, stunt your growth, not good for your joints. Those are all uh, a bunch of garbage and it's fine. Resistance training, totally fine as a preteen. Okay, set three, here we go. So if there is a time to use a little controlled momentum, it's gonna be on this exercise. It's okay to push the weight a little more to get a little momentum going in order to incorporate that progressive overload and make sure you're moving enough resistance to have a good impact. How many days should a beginner train back for a beginner should train back at least one day a week, but if you're a beginner, I recommend you're doing full body exercise, full body workouts three days a week. So in that case, you're hitting some kind of back three times per week. Deadlifts and barbell rows are gonna be your best bet for building thickness. So, you know, he's got good width, but wanna build thickness. Deadlifts and barbell rows. Now we're getting a lot of like similar benefits to a deadlift in the barbell row in that we're working a lot of lower back here, those spinal erectors that are gonna build some good thickness to the back as well. Set four, eight reps, here we go. Ah. Whew. Super important that you keep your back straight on these poles. Even if we've got a little bit of tilting through the hips as we're doing it, don't let that lower back bend. Um, we wanna make sure that all of our momentum is through the hips and not through that lower back. Is it better or worse to do this on a Smith machine? Better or worse to do this on a Smith machine? It's okay to do on a Smith machine, but guys, like the, the problem with the Smith machine is pretty unrealistic that you're gonna naturally keep a perfectly straight bar path. Like as you row, I'm actually trying to come back a little bit and then come forward and back. And with a Smith machine, you can't really do that because it's controlling your range of motion for you. Dumbbell bent over rows are great. I, it's just a different different method of hitting a, a, a bent over row. So is it just as good? Sure, yeah, I mean, there's nothing wrong with dumbbell rows, um, just switch it up. I always recommend switching it up. Do you have a preferred tempo when you're doing rows? My preferred tempo for this is just heavy but controlled. Okay, I'm not 
counting out my negatives or anything. As we get further on in the workout, we move a little more isolated. Things like chest supported rows, that's where we'll start paying more attention to our tempo. But it's really hard. I mean, you can't be like super concerned about tempo and lift a ton of weight on your first exercise. Hand should be about shoulder width apart. You go too wide and it starts messing with your range of motion, too narrow, you get too much biceps in there. So typically the more narrow you go, more biceps activation you're gonna get. Wider you go, you might get a little more back trap activation. So I like going about shoulder width apart. Okay, last set, best set, eight reps. is guys first exercise is done great way to start off back day good compound movement and so you'll notice today what we're going to do is we're going to alternate between a row and a pull down so we go rows we go pull downs rows and pull downs and next up we're gonna do a close grip lat pull down here and um, for this one we're going to go four sets of ten reps so also with our pull downs we're going to do uh, both close grip and wide grip and same thing with our rows. With our rows, I always like going overhand, neutral, and if I can, underhand, to make sure that we're targeting all areas of the back. What am I drinking today? I got my Fruit Punch Diamantized Amino Pro, two scoops, intro workout today. So give me my amino acids, my electrolytes, and obviously help me stay hydrated too. Especially on a back day, um, your larger muscle groups, way, way important that you make sure that you stay hydrated enough. So we'll go through almost twice as much water on a back day as we would on like arms or delts. Okay, 10 reps. ended up getting 14 there and one thing I want you guys to pay attention to as you're doing these if you have like a set rep range but it feels easy like don't stop don't just stop because trainer Mike said do 10 reps stop when it gets hard I mean you should be hitting close to failure on these so a lot of people get really caught up in rep ranges and rep ranges are good they're good like to give you some guidelines but if it's easy at 10 reps, don't stop. How important is it to stretch your lats at the top? Uh, super important to stretch your lats at the top. Guys, somebody might do this and make it a complete bicep movement if you're not getting your full range of motion at the top. If you don't go full range of motion, you're not activating your lats. It's a biceps exercise. And that's a mistake people make when they're working back. So you have to come all the way up in order to activate those lats. Cues. So for me, at the top, let your shoulder blades split. Make your neck disappear. And then before you start, depress your shoulders and then pull. And by doing that, you're gonna make sure you activate that scapula, which is in charge of making sure those lats get working, so. Okay, set two, about 10 reps, let's go. <sighs> That felt much better there. So again, I could put this whole stack on here. I'm at 190, I could go up to 295 pounds and make it a biceps exercise. But you're gonna get more out of your lats when you lighten up the weight and do full range of motion. Yeah, so I do carb cycle 
Um, but it's based off of what I'm training for the day. So what I mean by that is on leg days and back days, I typically do about 100 grams more in carbs. Um, so right now on my leg days and back days, I'm about 300 carbs, 275 protein, 50 fat, 45 fat. And then on other lighter days, I'm more like 175 carbs, 300 protein, 50 fat. Rest days, 100 carbs, 300 protein, 50, 60 fat. Uh, creatine should be taken, most men are going to see the most benefit of creatine at about seven, eight grams a day and uh, should be taken with carbohydrates, ideally maybe post-workout. Creatine is one of those things though where it's over time it starts to accumulate in your body so it's not like as important as say caffeine or something like that. Okay, 10 reps. <sighs> Ah. Uh, 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 uh. maybe a little heavy, but I felt like it. So we went a little heavier. So momentum, guys, yes, I could lighten up the weight and go NASM textbook strict. But at some point in time, you have to understand momentum's okay as long as you're getting a full range of motion. Do you have any tips for getting better at doing pull-ups besides doing traction with them? Yeah, pull-ups, to get better at pull-ups, and do them all the time, every day. You could do pull-ups and uh, Utilize the assisted pull-up machine if you have it um, as a way to help you as well. So I got one for you too. If you only had an hour a day to go to the gym, what is the best time management to weight train your cardio? Hour a day to go to the gym, I'd spend 45 minutes weight training and 15 minutes doing high intensity interval training, cardio, sprints, more or less. Okay guys, we're coming up on our last set, 10 reps. Let's get this back fired up. Full range of motion. Here we go. Uh, uh, hey. Yes, got a little sloppy towards the end there, but I wanted to, all right? That's okay sometimes. Versa grips, yes. Um, you guys can pick these up on the site, on bodybuilding.com. Um, I like these for back day. Uh, a lot of people make the argument of, come on, build up your grip strength, man. But the fact of the matter is, these guys, are gonna help me activate my back a little better than if I were um, to wear out my grip by not having them. So we do some exercises without them, but I find the Versa grips, it's my favorite, favorite wrist strap of all. Okay guys, moving on now. We're coming over here. I think we gotta get our mic fixed up here. All right, so now we're heading over. This is a lot of fun. Now we're gonna get into some supersets. So we're actually gonna go with a seated row over here. And we're gonna superset this seated row with a plate row, as I call it. So we're gonna put on a couple 45s on each side. So now we're starting to play around with a chest supported row. And on these exercises, you'll notice we get a little more controlled, not as much momentum in there. 
We're really trying to get the most out of it. And especially on our superset here, we're gonna make sure that our tempo's really controlled, focusing on that contraction, making sure that we're making the most out of it with every single rep. So we'll start off by doing the seated row. We're gonna go about 12 reps here. Chest supported. We're gonna change up our wrist position. So if you remember, we went overhand on the bar. Now we're gonna go a little more neutral to make sure that we're targeting all areas of the back. So neutral grip for 12 reps. Here we go. Right off of here, we're just grabbing some plates, 45 pound plates. And we're gonna do rows here. Twenty-four total reps on these rows. Great, great way to start activating that mid back even more. The benefit of supersets, especially, it's probably it's a little more like for more advanced um, exercisers. But the benefit of it is. You push yourself to almost failure on one. And then we switch up the exercise just slightly and we come down and we push the failure again. And it allows you to dig a little deeper into the muscle tissue and get a little different intensity than you would if you just trained to failure on a single exercise. Two clusters. So when we do BFR, uh, blood flow restriction training, two clusters would be, so we had to do like four sets, that's one cluster, and we do an additional four sets, that would be another cluster. This is a cluster of sets. Okay, let's keep the heart rate up. Let's go again, 12, and then superset into the 12. <sighs> 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 So we hit almost failure. Everything in me right now just wants to rest. But we're gonna come in here and we're gonna knock out these rows. different intensity than just doing one set to failure. Super sets, drop sets. I don't know that one's necessarily better than the other. They're both probably equally effective. Uh, super set just provides a little more variety. So, you know, if you're like in a really busy gym, really crowded time of day or something, Drop sets are probably gonna be your better bet. Um, otherwise, just adds a little variety to change up the exercise. But same principle applies with both of those. It's a good question. Whew. 
No real benefit of using plates versus dumbbells other than, again, you guys are in a crowded gym, you're trying to find some dumbbells. Plates you can pretty much always find, whereas my, most gyms might only have one or two pairs of a certain, uh, certain size of dumbbells. All right, third set. Superset action. Back starting to feel it. The pump is hitting. Let's do it. Boop. Uh. Starting to feel the fatigue. A little lower back, a little mid back. Arms starting to get a little pumped. Totally normal and definitely okay at this point in time too. So our supersets, we're typically only gonna go three sets because it's a little more volume per set. Hyper extensions can help with that Christmas tree back. I don't really do hyper extensions that often because I feel like deadlifts do so much more than hyperextensions. So I feel like, you know, if you're looking to be efficient in the gym, make the most out of your time there, I prefer focusing on deadlifts. Should you put deadlifts on a back day or a leg day? You can put deadlifts on a back or a leg day. I typically do it on a back day. Like I was saying earlier, if um, I'm gonna start with some kind of compound movement, um, deadlifts, T-bar rows, bent rows, one of those three, I'm gonna start off my back workout. What advice would somebody for general training for the wrist injury? Wrist injury. Um, play around with some, with some tempo stuff. So a lot of times people that have like, you know, joints that are achy or injured, you can get a lot of work done by just really controlling your tempo um, without having to use a ton of weight, which might aggravate that even more. Okay, 12 reps, supersetting it. So we're going wide grip lat pull down, supersetting it with a straight arm pull down for 12 reps. Let's do this. have to drop the weight quite a bit for our straight arm pull downs. Here we go. Great superset. Nice thing about that is you don't have to change machines too. So you don't have to worry about like losing your machine while you're off doing a different exercise. Hey Mike, what's the best training when you train two body parts two times per week? So train twice a week Best training split for if you want to hit all your body parts two times per week is either going to be like a push pull or an upper lower split um, four days per week. Maybe one day just for beach muscles for fun if you want to throw in a fifth day. I really like like a push pull, full body, or an upper, lower uh, split. Those are both great. It doesn't leave you as much time and flexibility to focus on some of your isolation movements, but 
you hit them more frequently, so it's just as effective. Are there any good cable substitutions if my lap pull down is taken? Good cable substitutions if lap pull down is taken. Yeah, I mean, you can play around with even doing, you know, kneeling down and doing a lap pull down on like a cable cage. You can do single arm stuff there if you want. Tons of variations for that. Guys, you got to understand what, the, what it takes to contract the lat. The lat contraction happens right there, okay? So I'm only going to pull to about my nose, forehead. There's no lat benefit to pulling all the way down to your chest. What a lot of people do is this, uh, 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 and they end up making a big biceps workout. You're getting your lat contraction here. So unless you come all the way up, you're not contracting your lats. And there's really no benefit to coming any lower than about your forehead. So full range of motion at the top, but don't be confused and think you have to come all the way down to your chest to contract your lats better. Hopefully that makes sense. Here we go. Drop it down right away into the straight arm pull down. We're going wide grip here. It's pretty good. You can feel your lats really fire up on there. Don't go too heavy on the pull downs. The uh, you straight arm pull down, you start getting too heavy and you'll take your lats out of it. On Instagram, guys, check me out at Trainer Mike One. That's the number one. I don't know who the guy is that took Trainer Mike, but that's okay. We'll be Trainer Mike One. Yes, follow along on Instagram. That's where I do most of my social activity. You guys want. Ask me questions, that's the best place to do it. Someone's doubting how true your range of motion thing for lats is. Be ecstatic to find out otherwise. So is it true that you don't have to go all the way down to your neck? No, I was lying to you guys. This is not true that you don't have to go all the way down. So somebody's doubting that uh, my range of motion knowledge on the lat pull down. Guys, it's, it's a, you have to understand where the lat is on the body. The, the hard part about it, the lats over here, we're trying to work through the shoulder, the elbow, and the wrist, okay? It's a lot of places things can get screwed up. Now the lat is this. That's what the lat is responsible for doing. That's its action. So when I get to here and I pull just a little bit more, I'm getting a lot of elbow flexion in there. It's a lot of biceps. You know, could I keep my lat contracted a little longer? Yes, maybe. But try it. If you doubt me, guys, at the end of the day, do whatever you want. I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. But I'm telling you, you're going to see the best lat contraction all the way up. Focus on depressing that scapula. That's where you're going to feel your lat activation. Is it necessary to train my rear delts on back day or shoulder day? I like training my rear delts on shoulder day. You can train them on back day, uh, but they're already getting a lot of activation on back day as it is, so I don't think it's really necessary. Okay, third and final set for my lat pull downs. Uh, 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 uh. Hey. 
All right, right up to 60 pounds now for our straight arm pull downs. There it is. Supersets are nice. You get a lot of work done in a short period of time. I mean, here we are 35 minutes or so into our workout and we're actually done with back. So that'll be our last back exercise. Now we move on to do a little bit of biceps. So if you're wanting to work biceps and back in the same day, try some of these supersets. They work really good. Now we're just gonna do a standing dumbbell alternate curl for five sets of eight. Thanks, Joe. Mike says he loves the show on Sunday evening. Um, then Sheila wants to know, she's a big fan, but can you show a circuit strength style workout in a pack gym? Sheila, you want to see a circuit style training routine in a packed gym? Yeah, we could probably do that sometime. I don't know about the packed gym part, but we could pretend like it was packed and do that. Yeah, maybe at the end of the day. A lot of times, guys, this is corporate headquarters, you know, five. 5.30, this place gets pretty busy, so yeah, I like that, Sheila. Maybe we'll, uh, we'll try and do that sometime. Okay, so five sets of eight on the bicep curls here. Biceps are already feeling fatigued because we use a lot of biceps when we're training back. So we'll start with 50s and go alternating curls, five sets of eight. So a little bit of swing is okay in your alternating curls. The biggest thing here is try and control your negative or your eccentric portion of the movement. So you're not just letting your arm fall when you get to the top. So if you have a little bit of swing getting up, I'm not too concerned about that. But just as you come down, keep that controlled. Great question. Do supersets impede your ability to progressively overload an exercise? Yes, without a doubt. So that's why you'll notice I'm not supersetting things like deadlifts, squats, bent over rows, bench press, because those are the exercises that I'm really trying to progressively overload on and apply that principle of training. I'm not trying to progressively overload on my seated, um, machine row, if that makes sense. So we start off with our strength movements, always trying to apply progressive overload there. And then we apply different forms of intensity as the workout goes on. So you're saying you don't track your one rep max? I do not track my one rep max on seated rows. But if I did, it would be like a thousand pounds, so. We got the blow over your head in, it's set. Nobody's calling you out, you should just say trainer Mike. Yeah, you should say trainer Mike one. And you know, Garrett, Garrett Talcott, my friend, thanks so much for the headband. Appreciate it. But I'm about, I'm about due for a new headband. So if anybody wants to make one up that says that trainer Mike one, send it over here to BBCom. You'll get some extra love here on the show. Set two. But Uh, 
Woo. Starts feeling pretty heavy. What's better for the bicep peak, dumbbells or easy bar? Uh, peak is mostly genetics, to be honest, guys. Um, you either have the insertions for a good peak or you don't. So knowing that, do a combination of both. There's not one that's better than the, than the other. Are BCAs really that beneficial, especially if you take a high protein diet? Probably uh, not, okay? It's not, it's not gonna make a huge difference unless you're in a big calorie deficit, okay? And you're concerned about muscle wasting. Um, BCAs are not anabolic, like they're not gonna build muscle, but they're anti-catabolic, meaning they will help to prevent the breakdown of muscle tissue. So yeah, they're not like a huge muscle builder. Don't be confused and think branch chain amino acids are like, oh my gosh, I gotta take them to gain all this muscle. No, they're just gonna help you prevent losing muscle during time of intense training. Yeah, so I'll always do BCAs first thing in the morning before some moderate intensity cardio, you know, just to help prevent catabolism. Okay. Here we go. Guys, we are starting to feel that. Biceps are already a little tired after back. It's a great way just to finish them off. Justin, good question. Is swinging the dumbbells necessary? You gotta understand, man. I mean, you could. Yeah, I can sit here with 10 pound dumbbells and do absolutely perfect form, but you're trying to provide and, uh, you know, some progressive overload. You're trying to, you know, implement the fact that we have to lift a heavy load in order to continue to see growth while trying to maintain maximum muscle stimulus. So that's why I mentioned, I'm not too concerned if I swing a little bit, as long as I'm controlling it on the way down. That's where muscle damage occurs. That's where you're gonna grow muscles if need be. So for me, yeah, I mean, I, I could do a lot less. I could do a lot more, but I think it's fine to swing a little bit. Just don't over arch your back, okay? So if you do a little bit, I don't see a problem with that, but do what works for you. Yeah, if you want to get massive arms in general, triceps do take up a larger part of the arm. Um, so you probably want to spend a little more time on triceps than you do on biceps. But remember, I mean, all your pressing motions, they're going to incorporate triceps. So your shoulder press, your chest press, all that uses a lot of triceps. Set four. <sighs> Four sets down, we still have one more. We're gonna start setting up our BFR training while we wait. Intra workout drinks are going to be really only beneficial if you're exercising 
intensely for more than 90, 90 minutes at a time. So for most people that come in the gym, train a good 60 minute weight training session, there's no point in doing carbs during your workout. Um, just a waste of money and it makes your gut feel a little nasty in my opinion. I will uh, be competing here in seven weeks from today. So I've got a classic physique competition in seven weeks. So currently dieting down for that. Started at about 222, down to uh, 213 now. Probably end up around 205. So I'm in that fun phase of starting to lose strength, starting to lose size, but not quite to the shredded game yet. But we're getting there. It's a process. So things will start getting really fun here in about three, four more weeks when we really start seeing the definition come in. In your opinion, what is the most underrated supplement? The most underrated supplement, in my opinion, fish oil. I think people do not put enough attention on fish oil. You know, unless you're eating two to three servings of fatty fish per week, like salmon, mackerel, halibut, you are not getting what you need for your omega-3 fatty acids. A lot of people just jump right to pre-workouts and things. Get your fish oil. All right, here we go, last set. guys let's move on to our BFR now that we got our more of our you know compound bicep movement out of the way so two clusters four sets we're gonna go 20 reps rest 30 seconds then 10 reps 10 reps 10 reps take off the straps and repeat that what pre-workout do I take I take dimatized pre-wo one scoop Maybe if I'm feeling nuts, like a scoop and a quarter. But uh, yeah, dimatized pre well, one scoop. About 25, maybe 30 minutes pre-workout. common to have like a dominant side on your chest. Um, I know I certainly do. How do you even it out? You just work more dumbbells and cables. But fact of the matter is you may never even it out completely. And I've been trying to even mine out for 12 years. Still doesn't happen. So, okay, we're going to tighten these up to about a seven or eight if I had to rank it on level of discomfort. So nothing too crazy, but, um, it doesn't feel awesome either. And we're gonna try and pick a weight here that we feel like would be appropriate for our rep range. So again, 20 reps. Thirty-second break. Super important that you guys watch the clock on this. These are not the official BFR straps. So no, I didn't spend eighty dollars on them. Um, I get these. I got these on eBay. Just search medical turn kit, and I uh, got these for about five dollars. And they work. I actually like them better than the official eighty-dollar BFR straps. Okay, ten reps. Our 30 seconds goes by pretty quick. Got to keep moving. Uh. 
that'll work but we'll try it if you hear a loud bang it didn't work um whew, we got a lot of good vascularity starting to come in with these straps feeling pretty good guys what are your thoughts on the weight isolate? weight isolate is the only way you should be consuming in my opinion it's uh just a higher quality protein than like a whey concentrate yeah some blends are good if you're a little tight on budget that's okay but if you have the ability, I'd, I'd recommend an isolate. Okay, 10 reps. This will be our third of four sets on this cluster. does not feel awesome, but we really, really start seeing good vascularity come in. The pump come in. This is where you start getting the road maps in your arms. Feels really good. Can you do VFR training multiple days a week, or is it only good if you do once? I'd probably only recommend VFR training once a week per muscle group. Um, any more than that, and maybe twice, but I'd say once a week is probably good benefits of it like today we don't have a ton of time for biceps we just train back so we get a lot of work done in a shorter period of time okay last set of 10 here we go We are going to unwrap these, give ourselves about 90 seconds rest, and then we'll hit our second cluster, guys. Arms are feeling just ridiculously pumped right now. We're gonna go down 10 pounds for our next cluster when we're ready to do that. So the benefits of BFR, you know, you're allowing, you're, you're cutting off blood flow, obviously, and you're allowing those cells to kind of hypervolumize, which um, can allow you to get, uh, again, stretch the cells, potentially cause a little more hypertrophy without the, um, typically what you'd need the extra resistance for. So um, again, BFR is not superior to regular weight training. I want to make sure that is clear. It's not like you're going to see extra gains from BFR. You may see similar gains in a shorter period of time with less resistance on BFR. That's where the benefit comes in. A lot of people that are like, oh, I'm going to grow my arms two inches because I started BFR. No, it's just a strategy in your tool belt that you can pull out when needed. Okay, so now we move on to our second cluster. So we go same rep range, 20, 10, 10, 10. Tighten these guys back up, ouch. And uh, let's get it done. Blow these arms up. Really have to rely on your headband of gains for this second cluster to push you through. Um, what are the most important muscle names that I should be working on that day? Most important muscle names that you should be working on back day. Um, your lats, short for latissimus, dorsi. Um, your traps, 
and uh, your rhomboids and your spinal erectors. Those are kind of your show muscles and you got a lot of your go muscles in there as well, but those are the ones to focus on. 10 reps. Whew. Two more. All I can think about is the cardio we have to do after this. Benefit of BFR, you just joined. Thanks for joining. Benefits of BFR is that we are going to get a little more work done in a shorter period of time with less weight. So we just did a back workout. We don't have a ton of time to go through like a full arm workout. So um, we're allowing that blood to really pool in there, hypervolumize those cells, potentially see a similar amount of growth and stimulus. I don't ever train my forearms. I probably should, but I just don't. It's too boring for me, so I'll deadlift instead. Deadlift solves all problems. Here we go. <laughs> Short break and one more set. Yeah, yeah I, you're right, guys. I have the ability to be pretty, do pretty much whatever I want in this gym. And I understand most people don't have that ability. Um, so use a regular preacher curl with like an easy bar. You can use a, a machine like plate loaded preacher curl as well. Um, it doesn't have to be this one. I would never do this in a gym just because I wouldn't want to move stuff around. But this gym, I can kind of do what I want. So it's kind of cool. All right, last set. Here we go. <sighs> Woo, there it is guys. We are done. Back and biceps, BFR. I want you guys to check this workout out. Try it this weekend. Let me know how you like it guys. Follow me along on Instagram at TrainerMike1. Check me out on Body Space and Mr. Symmetry. Facebook page at Trainer Mike Physique. You guys have any questions, hit me up there. We are tuning out Flex Friday.